The first item I want to touch on is the changes made to user authentication. There will be a new login screen and we've added the use of JSON web tokens to set limits on a user's session time. You can configure system-wide defaults and also assign user-specific overrides. Quick heads up, this will lead to sessions timing out. So if you're running a dashboard on a NOC screen, create a user for the NOC display and configure their token timeouts to fit the purpose. We've also added support for SAML-driven single sign-on authentication. Again, StatSeeker offers user-specific overrides, so you can have select accounts falling back to file authentication if needed. Onto the World Map dashboard, we've added the ability to specify map providers. Once again, you can configure a default map provider and optionally allow panel-specific overrides. Fresh installs will be required to specify a map tile provider. However, users upgrading will maintain their current map provider configuration. We've also added an interface in the admin tool to manage the map panel geolocation data through CSV files, a simple and efficient method to enable your use of the world map panel. The image map panel has seen some updates. You're no longer restricted to placing your map nodes on the image background itself and can utilize the entire panel container. In fact, you don't need to use an image background at all. You can simply add nodes to a panel and position them as needed. We've also added a library of network hardware related icons that you can employ as your image map nodes. The last dashboard change that I want to talk about is the change made to the metrics tab in your panel configurations. We've added a range of quality of life features to simplify and guide the process of configuring your panel queries. There are some new analytic options. One of these is the ability to directly access your baseline data. That's the summarized data generated from your data history and it's used to project your network behavior into the future with data forecasting or to compare that history to your current behavior for anomaly detection. With 554, you can overlay that baseline data directly on your graphs. Here we're looking at inbound utilization for an interface over the last seven days. And here is the same graph also displaying our data baseline for that interface. We have our historical median, the red dotted line here, and an indication of the variability of the data as seen for this interface over the last six months. Here we have what appears to be our weekend, and we can see that while we typically experience very low traffic levels, there have been some instances of some fairly high utilization in the past. The bounds we're seeing here are configurable, and they're currently set to 95%, indicating that we should, based on the history of this interface, expect to see 95% of our data fall within this shaded area. And we can see here where we have data falling outside of this 95th percentile. This is what we would term anomalous data. It's unlike 95% of the data seen for that interface at that time on that day of the week. The range of the historical data used to generate the baseline is also configurable. So you aren't limited to just comparing the reported data to the historical behavior of the previous six months. When used with data forecasting, this ability to set the period of data used to generate the baseline means that you can forecast based on recent changes to your network, demand, topography, or infrastructure. By setting the baseline data range used in your forecast, the impact of those recent changes won't be diluted by the month's worth of data preceding the change. This new baseline functionality is available in graphical and tabular reports, dashboards, and your threshold configurations. We've also added a couple of additional formats to our trend line options. In addition to the trend line slope and fit, you can now get details of numerical value and percent change from the first to last data point on the trend line. Here we are graphing the data rate of an interface over a two week period and we have a trend line plotted. In the table, we have the average rate, the daily change indicating a daily drop of two megabits a second, and now the new formats. The total change in the trend line value across the reporting period of around 30 megabits a second, which equates to about a 12% decline in the trend line values over that time. Again, in addition to dashboards, you can use these formats in reports and thresholds. To assist you in getting some immediate value out of these new analytics, we have added a couple of new stock reports that make use of them. From the console, under interfaces, we have utilization baseline and trends. In the baseline report, we're looking at the average utilization for the reporting period, the baseline median, and the difference between the two. Now this report has a drill down to a filtered version of the trend report for that selected interface. 
and that's got a trend graph in there. And in the utilization trend line report, again, we're looking at the average utilization and the change in the trend line values for the reporting period. With a drill down back to the baseline report with a baseline graph. Since we're already here, let's look at the other changes in the console. We've continued with the legacy report replacement process, updating the legacy device health reports, focusing on temperature, CPU, and memory. We've also relocated some of the more commonly used reports from the general section up to the top of the report list for easy access. For our larger customers, there's also been some performance improvements applied to the console view. So if you've got a few thousand devices, you'll notice the improvement in loading and searching the device list. On the topic of performance improvements, there's been a lot of work done to the Mac IP package. It's now far more tunable, improving both performance and the associated data footprint, allowing for greater data retention. Now, the API implementation for the Mac IP package has been reworked. So if you are using the API to interact with your Mac IP data, you want to go and review the new Mac IP endpoints. On to the admin tool. There have been quality of life and UI changes to users, time filters, SLAs, delete and retire of devices, auto grouping, alerting, and thresholds. And manual grouping has been entirely restructured, rolling the previous add and edit, entities to a group, and groups to an entity screens into a single unified manual group management screen. That's a quick overview of the major changes in Statseeker version 554.